My name is Bry Sargent and I have been a safety manager for nearly 20 years. I've trained over 100 safety managers and it is my passion to talk about management commitment, safety culture, and the psychology of safety. So today we are going to talk about creating systems and processes that make your safety management more efficient. Let's get to our topic today, which is creating systems and processes in your safety management system. So we're expanding on what I was talking about on the last live about prioritizing your to-do list. So having a prioritized to-do list is great, but now what you want to do is make sure that you have systems in place that could be efficient and that are repeatable, right? So it's so funny. And I actually had somebody ask me this question yesterday. When people ask us what we do, it's comical, right? Because when you look at our job description, our job description is like four pages long. And um, our task list is never ending. No day is ever the same, right? So you might be questioning going, how can we put systems and processes in place when everything we do is just so different? And why is that important? So what I'll tell you is that it's important because um, the brain likes efficiency. <laughs> so it is possible to have a system in place, but you just kind of change the topic that that system is, uh, is about. And I'll explain that further in just a moment. But it's important because our brains, it they like efficiency. And one of the biggest complaints that I hear from safety managers and what I hear people all the time in my surveys and in my questions is that we get a lot of management pushback. Well, if you think about what safety does, we are making people change. We are making people change their behavior, change their procedures, right? And people don't like change. And it's not their fault that they don't like change. It's because our brains don't like change. So we're trying to get people to change and it's just going against everything that the brains want to do. So the more that we can do things in a system or a process, the easier it is for people to accept it. So as we are trying to roll out new programs or do reviews of programs, it's easier for them to accept what you're doing and support it because it's something that you do over and over again, just with a different topic. Um, and it's easier for your brain to kind of do it, right? So when you have these systems and processes in place, it also makes sure that nothing falls through the cracks. Because remember, like I said in the beginning, my job description is four pages long and my to-do list is over 100 items. It's very, very easy for something to get lost or forgotten or missed. But when you have a system in place, it is less likely that that's going to happen. All right, so let's talk about what kind of systems can you put in place. The first one would be for program rollouts or refreshers. So let's say that you have a new program that you're rolling out or you are doing an annual refresher. So, you know, you might do HASCOM training every year. Or you might do um, forklift training uh every year or, you know, that's like every three years, but still, you might do the, you know, refresher training that you do on a regular basis. So when you go to do it, if you do it the same way, just with a different topic, it kind of makes it easier for people to accept it, right? So how are you going to create a process for how you're rolling out these programs? Step one is you need to make a a matrix. So I like to use a training matrix where you list out every single thing that you're going to train on, right? And then you put it to the month that you're going to train it on. So you have your calendar and you have January is always going to be emergency preparedness month. And February is always going to be HASCOM month. And March is always going to be lockout tagout month, right? So that's going to be your refresher training calendar. And you could put the periods as a month long. Uh, that's very easy to do. That way you can cover 12 topics in a year or 24 topics in a two year period or combine them. You know, I used to have some topics that were annual and some that were every two years. I never did the three years. If there was a three year requirement, I moved it up to two years because I just think three years is too far apart. So um, you could put it on your calendar that way. You could do a six week program or even a two month program. So let's say that you have, some, you are, have a highly hazardous process at your facility that you want to train on more often or train in depth on, maybe that is a two month period that you're going to be making sure that you're rolling that out. All right. It's going to take a bit longer. So put those on your calendar so that way you have 
a, pro a matrix, and this is the calendar that you follow, and you live and die by this calendar, right? So someone comes to you and says, hey, Bri, I need you to do Hascom training, you know, in October. You go, no, 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 no. Hascom training is in March, and it is always in March, and we do not change the training matrix, because in doing so, we're going to have to change everything. But, you know, if you need me to do, like, we have a new chemical, that's different. That's a new process. We could do that, right? But we're still going to do the overall house come training in March, whatever it happens to be. So you live and die by that calendar. Step two in creating a process is that you want to make a list of the multiple touch points that you're going to have for that for programs. And what this is, is there's a marketing rule of the rule of seven that you actually have to touch somebody with a marketing message seven times before they will buy into it. And I know what you're saying. You're like, hey, Bri, I'm not a salesperson. I'm a safety guy. I get that. But it's your job to sell safety. And in selling safety, you have to touch them seven times with your marketing message. So come up with seven ways that you can actually touch them with that safety policy, that procedure over a month long period. Right. So that could be um, the program itself. You know, hey, I'm updating it. I want to get employees buy in in it and the review. You're going to train them on it. You might throw in uh, a lunch and learn about it. You might put up posters, do an incentive program, hang, hand out promotional materials, you know, whatever it happens to be. Seven times you're going to touch them on that program. I like to create a longer list than seven so that when I'm doing a program rollout, I can just pick one off the list. Right? Maybe it's a crossword. Maybe it's a bingo game. Maybe it's a Jeopardy. Maybe it is, um, you know, I'm going to stop people at the gate and ask them trivia questions. I don't know. Just seven ways I'm going to touch them on that topic. So that way when I go to roll out a program, I just pick from the list and I pick seven of them off the list. Usually pr training, posters, program review are definitely always going to be on there. All right. And then your third step is going to be create a process that you will follow every time you roll a program out. And this has to include communications cadence as well as how you're rolling out the program. So when you start, it's like, okay, it's March, it's Hascom month. I need to mention it at the manager's meeting. I need to review the program myself. I need to get employees involved in the program review. I need to take it to the management team to have them review it. I need to create training materials. And then you have it so that like the first week of the month is when we do training. The second week of the month is when we launch the incentive program. The third week of the month is when safety committee does an observation blitz. The fourth week of the month is when we uh, close it out and we do like a trivia, you know, questionnaire, whatever it happens to be. But you do it every single month and for every topic the same exact way. So you might be scheduling a workshop training. So. I would have safety managers that insisted on doing all the training themselves. So they would do it once a month and they would call it a workshop. Or I had other people where they had their supervisors do it daily or weekly in toolbox talks. So maybe that's part of your rollout program. But then also plan your promotional materials. So, and here's what's really cool about promotional materials. If you have templates that you can use that you can just change the template every month, right? So it's has come month this month and it's lockout tag out month next month. You can use the same template, but then change the picture, change the wording. So that way it's very easy for you to, to move on. And when you have these processes, it makes it so much easier for you when distractions come. If an injury was to happen, if an accident was to happen, if you have to work on something else, you're not dropping the ball on your rollout. You have time because you now have an efficient process that you're following, right? And then make sure that in that process, you do it four weeks, six week, eight week, however you decide your process is, that um, you have the different touch points built in there. So even though I might have like has come month in March, I would probably start my process in February because like, I would spend March training on it, but in February, I'm doing my program review, um, you know, getting the management team ready for it. I'm doing all the pre-work to let them know like, well, March is has come month and this is what we're going to be doing. And then in March, if lockout tag out is in April, then in March, I'm doing like all the pre-work for lockout tag out as well. So it ends up being a process. So that is one system or process you can create for rolling out programs. 
um, or doing refresher training. Some other ones might be like your monthly tasks. So we talked about in the last live creating a long task list of everything that you have to do so nothing drops off the list, right? If you can break that down to what you have to do monthly, weekly, right? And then throw it into that date on your calendar so that the same week of the month, you're always doing the same thing. You're always doing inspections on the first week of the month. You're doing um, safety committee on the third week of the month. You're doing reports on the second week of the month, whatever it happens to be. So you kind of group them in over a four week period throughout the month. And then you're just on repeat. You're just on wash and repeat. It's really, really cool when you do it this way because nothing ever, you know, falls through the cracks, like, like I've said. And it just becomes this routine where you can easily plan for everything. And I love doing it over a four-week period, right? Because what that means is that one week a quarter, you've got nothing planned. Vacation! So <laughs> anyway... That's, what, that's the beauty of breaking everything down into like the first week of the month or the second week of the month and all of that. Another process you can put in place is how you do inspections. So I used to like break my inspections up throughout the quarter or throughout the month and do like a little bit here and a little bit there. And I'll tell you that was so inefficient. It was crazy. So what I started to do was I did them all in one day. I would inspect my entire facility in one day. If your facility is too big to do that, then maybe you do it over a two day or a three day period. But knock it out where that is all that you're doing is doing your facility inspection. It makes it so much more efficient. You get through it quicker and then you get to spend the rest of the month working on everything else. So what I would do is, and here's the cool thing, if you don't have um, a three shift type of process, so we would have, we, we had three shifts, but there was this lull in the third shift from like 2 a.m. To, to about 5 a.m. where there was only one or two people on property. And I would come in at like, I don't know, 3.30, 4 in the morning and start my inspection. I'd leave early that day, no worries. But that way I was doing part of my inspection when there was nobody there. And it made it so much easier to be looking at, you know, the electrical and, you know, working surfaces and things like that because I could see what their starting point was like before work actually started. All the inspections that you do, like when they're actually working, you're going to be doing, you're going to be looking at stuff like that anyway when you're doing observations and assessments and all of that. But when you can actually just, you know, walk through your facility when there's nobody there, it is just beautiful. Um, so with your inspections, create a process for that too, where you do the inspection, you correlate all the data, and then you submit the work orders. And then every week you pick a day where you're just going to verify and follow up on the, on the inspection. And that way you're done and it's just so much more efficient so much more efficient. You can also, I'm not going to get into it here, but you could also create processes for your audits or your evaluations or your PHAs too. So like I, I would do an annual evaluation of my entire safety program. And it was a two week process where employees were involved and I was involved and we ran it the same every single year. So my management team knew what to, ex it, uh, what to expect. My employees knew what to expect. I got the first year I got pushback on it, but once I saw the benefit, I got less and less pushback because we were doing it the same. I wasn't surprising them with anything. I wasn't changing anything. Their brains were okay with it. So you could do the same thing for audits, evaluations, your PHAs that you have to do every three years. Um, you could do that too. It is, or is it five years on PHAs? It's three years on audits, five years on PHAs, right? And the only time that you would adjust your process is if the data shows that what you're doing isn't working, right? So if all of a sudden the understanding of your training is going down, then you know that there's something wrong in your process. If your inspections are showing a lot more hazards or you're getting a lot more hazard reports that your inspections aren't catching, then you know that your process isn't working. If something has fallen through the cracks, then you might need to adjust your process. That's really the only way, that you, the only time you'd have to change it. So once you get the process in place, you're good to go. You're golden, right? And then test it. So like if, if you see that something's not working, don't just dump the whole thing and bring in something new. You change one tiny bit. 
It's testing it. It's going, okay, what part of it isn't working? Maybe it's the time of day I'm doing the inspection. Maybe it's the way I'm entering the work orders. So you change one tiny thing and you just keep testing going, okay, how can I improve this process? So don't overhaul your whole thing. If you like this stuff and you love talking about safety, about management support and commitment and the psychology of safety, make sure you are on my email list. I send out a couple of weekly newsletters that include forms, documents, special tidbits, and I let you know what's going on at The Safety Geek. The easiest way to get on my newsletter is to go to thesafetygeek.com forward slash five ways. You'll get a great little free guide and then you will hop on my email list. So thank you very much, my friends, and I will chat with you next week. Thanks. Bye-bye.